Welcome to the Get Your Ass Up Podcast. I'm Tony, the closer. I'm here to inspire and motivate you to never give up on your dreams. As a former NFL athlete who overcame personal setbacks like going to jail and bankruptcy, I turned my life around to become one of the top salesmen in the world. And this podcast will feature celebrity guests, successful entrepreneurs, and my incredible network to give you real-world advice on how to achieve success in all aspects of life. Whether you're looking to build a successful business, achieve financial freedom, or simply need some motivation to keep pushing forward, we've got you covered. Man, we've had amazing celebrity guests on here like Dame Dash, T.I., my boy Joe Hayden and Edrian James, Andre Berto and more, sharing their stories and insights on how to reach their full potential. Listen, so are you ready to get your ass up and achieve your dreams? Hit that subscribe button right now so you never miss an episode of the Get Your Ass Up podcast with me, your boy Tony the Closer. Let's dive in. Let's change your life together. Let's go. Hey, welcome to the Get Your Ass Up show. I got my man, Mr. Business is Booming. You did. AB in here, man. The, the, uh, the artist. We we not we no longer associating him with just the athlete. My brother is an artist. We Indeed. we seen him literally right now transition from the football field yes. to putting that shit on. Yes. <laughs> Looking to put some shit on. I knew I forgot to put some shit on. I had I knew I had Yeah, that shit go right there. I forgot to put this shit on. Get your shit right there. We're gonna let on. you get your shit right, let bro. Let me put this shit on. I got this sh oh, it's on. It's on. Yeah. AB's in the building, man. He got the boots. Thanks the whole for having fit. Me, the whole Balenciaga fit. This, this, this dude, he he yeah. knocked the whole the whole top to bottom. You, you killing it, hoodie. You know you. you Scully. Know, you know you my dog. You had to come to the eighty four seven. You know it's a week before the season, so we feeling like it's almost that time to shine. You know what this time be like, right, T? Yeah. This is when the season about to start, all the hard work you done put in for the year, it's like that time to shine. And I feel, I feel like, I still feel the same way, Like, but I feel like it's time to shine in other ways now. You know, but it's like the season, like, this one the archives, like this one to count. So it was like, I'm still in that mode. You still in that mode, but just in other areas. I know you got your own TV, TV, TV online, TV. TV network, show, yeah. Network, yeah. You know what I mean, your own network. You know you pioneer a lot of you know boss moves, independent ownership. So I'm just excited like we in the season. So are you ready to get your stats up? Like you yeah, got man. goals for like not only yeah. on the field but yeah. You know, personally, man, like you know um, I've been watching your uh, your career from a, a athlete for you know your whole career, um, and you know I always respected your work ethic, right? I think a lot of people see what what you put on on field on Sundays, but um, what what was most impressive to me is like I used to follow you like on Snapchat, and I always saw you working. Like it, that was one of the most impressive things to me was to like see you really put in the work because most people, you know, that that aren't real doers and haven't accomplished anything, they don't pay attention to the actual work. They always just see the finished product. They see the touchdown. They see the jukes. They see the you know, the dances and the celebration, but they don't actually pay attention to the work. Um, so um, I know as as your new season approaches, bro, one thing I, I, I know, you know, no matter what you endure, what endeavors you, you know, you go to, you're going to put the work in. So you'll always have an opportunity to be great at it because it's not always about being a finished product, it's about being willing to get progressively better every single day. Um, so, you know, even with your music career now and being an artist, man, I personally just think from just watching your work ethic in the past, I think you have the opportunity to do amazing shit. And I just want to, you know, bring you on the show, uh, you know, bring, give, you know, give you your flowers, bro, because I think, you know, unfairly, uh, you got a bad rap. I think like anybody that's expressive gets like looked at in the light that sometimes is, is like if you don't fit into the traditional mold, people try to you know make you the bad guy or make you like uh, the villain. And um, I've had the opportunity to talk to you off camera for the last couple of hours, man. And you know, bro, I'm impressed. You know, flat out, like you know, mad respect to you. Um, you're you're well more intelligent than I think anybody gives you credit for. Uh, I think that you're uh, you're uh, definitely misunderstood, but I think you don't give a fuck. And I think that's a cool part about it is you're being yourself and uh, 
I, I've noticed you say it time and time again, like you let God judge you and that's who you're working for and towards. So, um, man, I just want to say thank you so much for taking time to sit down with me uh, and share uh, with my audience, man. So we're going to have uh, a good time in, the, in this segment here. Uh, I want to ask you a few questions just about uh, your life, what you got going on in uh, business and and uh, the life after football. And I, I want to let people get to know Antonio probably from a little bit different perspective from what uh, you've been seeing in the past. Um, but I do like to ask all my guests when I first start off the show, um, what one gr regret do they say that they have in their life? And it can be anything. It doesn't have to be related to football. It can be just anything. Do you have one thing that kind of like, you know, ticks you at night or when you wake up throughout the day and you go, damn, man, I could have handled it differently. Uh, what would your one regret be? And probably I'll never see myself play again, you know. i never see myself score. i never see me in my uniform. Like, because, you know, some guys' uniform is like, they look uncomfortable. Like, my uniform, it look like, like I was made for the uniform. So, I just regret, you know, they'll never see, like, this type of energy, you know. You know, that I can't see it, you know, but I just regret that I can't really see myself do it again. I would love to see myself do it again. So do you want to play again? No, I'd rather get played, you know, I'd rather put that shit on. You know, I don't want to play, you know, I did my plan. It's enough playing, you know, I got more responsibilities that's more important than playing. But, but you could play me though, you know, I, I want to get played in stadiums. I want to inspire. I want to give love out, you know, I want to encourage. I just want to be the light. Well, you still in stadiums right now to this day because, man, every time I, I look on um, on somebody's highlight right now, they're doing your dance. Yes. AB is still in the end zone even without being on the NFL field right now. How does that make you feel? Well, that's a testament to the great guys, you know, some of our peers, you know, the ballers who feel the love and the energy that pour out and a testament to those guys that support and love you know, and just uh, give me that encouragement. You know, it's not about me, you know. It's about those, you know, the ones that support and uh, love and show love and those guys that have been, you know, encouraged by the energy and is carrying it out, you know, and that's what life's about, you know, putting out good things and sharing the love, seeing it travel. And uh, I'm just excited about it and, you know, want to keep inspiring so more players, you know, more players come out and, you know, explore more of their talents and be more of themselves and, um, you know, just promote a healthy culture, a healthy world. So on a, on a day, day in, day in basis now, you went from, you know, like being an athlete. What's a day like for AB now? Well, it's just instead of going to the field for six to eight hours, you might be on your phone for two or three or, you know, in the studio. It's nonstop being productive, obviously, I like discipline, you know, I always work out, you know, I like to be physical fit. I don't gotta kill myself and but I love to train, I like to eat healthy, you know, being more uh there with my kids, more time. I was gonna bring my daughter over today, but she just got from track. So I wanted to make sure she freshen up, don't be over here just sitting dirty. So, you know, just being there for uh for my family to see them, you know, to encourage them to be their best selves, my kids, you know. Some things are more important now than, you know, just me playing ball. I think, you know, I fulfilled those goals as a player and overcame that adversity to, you know, to win and be a champion. So for me, it's more things that are just important than just keeping this booming. What What did that feel like being able to get that championship? Um, you actually came off the bench, right? Um, and had such a pivotal role um, in that Super Bowl, damn near unguardable. I mean, you look at what your, what your production was, like what was that feeling, man, of, of being such a key part of a, of a win and, uh, and doing it off the bench? How did that make you feel personally? Well, at that moment, I just knew, you know, I was just grateful, you know, grateful to get an opportunity to continue my career, and, you know, continuing in fashion of, you know, dominance. You know, big plays, 
you know, that moment I had been held off for football like a year and a half. So for me, it was just, you know, putting my best foot forward, you know, getting that chance to just do it, you know, getting that chance to give myself a chance to persevere. And, uh, you know, so for me, I was just gladly that I could be a part of something that was bigger than myself, something that was special and something that could, uh, you know, fulfill me in my career and, uh, and in my life in the moment where I was at, you know, nothing was more fulfilling than winning that Super Bowl after the adversity. You know, it wasn't even about not being in the position I want or not being able to do what I want. You know, I was just grateful for the position of, you know, being that opportunity and, you know, never take that for granted, you know. A lot of people can't persevere from adversity. They may not get a chance to bounce back. They may get a, not get a chance to get a second chance. But, you know, anytime you see someone uh, be mistreated or uh, not get what they deserve, be able to see them bounce back and get another shot and uh, take advantage of, you know, that's a that's life right there, you know. Going through things, overcoming it, uh, getting better from it, and uh, responding even better, and uh, that's growth. Everybody that hated on you, right? Everybody that, because I know you, you know, you're human. I know you see what people say. You you mm -hmm. hear the, you know, the media. You come back in that season and, uh, you know, no, everybody tried to make it seem like you were going to be an issue and you couldn't play, you know, anymore. You you were injury prone and you you were going to be a distraction and all these different things. And then you come out there and um, you put up, you know, from what all, all accounts of what we've heard is, you know, being a great teammate, you did all the things that were necessary. And then obviously what we, what we could see on the field is you, you were killing. Like you were looking, you know, top, 10-ish receiver or higher and doing it off the bench. How yeah. good did that feel to be able to, you know, get that shit off your back, you know, because I know like a lot of people just didn't believe in you. Well, it's not what others believe in, you know, it's about believing in yourself. And, you know, criticism is answered with achievement. You know, people gonna criticize you if you're the guy who cleaned the floor, you're the guy who paint the walls, if you're the guy who fixed the roof, it's gonna be criticism. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in this life, you gotta set your own principles and your own beliefs to believe in yourself and what you know truth. And for me, you know, I just need an opportunity to continue my career. It wasn't a point of proving anything or what I could do. I think when you have the greatest quarterback inquiring you to play, you know, I think that shows what you could do. So for me, it was all about just you know what I mean? Just getting back to that feel of what I love, you know, being, you know, being in the field and, you know, and being that kid who just want to accomplish his goal and just be his best self. So getting back to that feeling, you know, I think for me, when you at the game a year and a half, you know, looking at guys like uh, Deshaun Watson, you know what I mean? They, you, you know what I mean? You already set out a year and a half is, you know, you're just trying to get back to the, the feeling, the, you know, the discipline the grit of the game, you know, the the mental focus, you know what I mean? So for me, it just was getting back on track or, or getting another start. But, you know, in this game, you know, you start, but you know, you gotta know when to end. You gotta know when to walk off. You gotta know when to make the right decision for yourself. Speaking of walking off, you know, that was obviously well, well publicized, you walking off the field. Um, what, do you have any regrets with that man at all? Like, I mean that. No. Because like that was a sign. That's a signature, like to a lot of people to say, hey, like this guy is never to be trusted ever again when it comes to being a teammate. So at that point, it's like basically you saying that you're 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 okay with walking away from your Hall of Fame potential career. Um, no, Hall of Fame is credentials. You know, it's really not even your credentials. It's voters. You know, it's voters, writers. I mean, they don't determine my value. The NFL, you know, uh, scouts, they never determine my value. So for me, I'm already a Hall of Fame, man. I took, I, I did the things the Hall of Famer do. Uh, made money, made memories, I was champion. I took care of my family. I gave my family, uh, you know, financial freedom to stand on and confidence to believe on, you know what I mean, in regards of you know, being true to themselves, making a life, persevering, pushing through, overcoming adversity, being disciplined, 
You know, I learned some intangibles, you know, that helped me in living. But life, you know, it, football is just a game. It's just, you know, not who I am. It's just what I do. And knowing that, you know, I know I can't just, you know, play football forever. And, you know, you, know, you got to be smart for yourself. You know, when you take care of yourself, you're crazy. When you do what other people want you to do, you're stupid. So for me, I'd rather be crazy. You know, I'd rather be crazy than stupid. And, you know, I'd rather do the things that make my heart right, make me feel right when I'm operating, you know, in a good mental and spiritual state. You know, emotionally, we could be in different states. But, you know, it's PME, physical, mentally, emotionally. So um, I'm just mastering myself and uh, living for my highest purpose. You know, the game is just what I choose to do to take care of my family. It's not who I am. So how people will feel about me in regards to being a football player, whether you feel bad or you feel good, you have a right to your opinion. Your opinion don't affect me how you feel. It don't make me uh, make my blood pressure higher. It don't make me react. It don't give me no subtle feeling. You know, I just appreciate your perspective or anyone's perspective or how they think I should feel or how they may want me to feel, but my feels is all due to me, you know? So that belief and that, you know, that chrome heart, it's just about living out our truth, you know, being inspired, being encouraged, and uh, just pioneer your truths, you know? My truths, you know, it may not be understanding for everyone to understand it, but hopefully one day they'll understand. Mm -hmm. So you you play with with two Hall of Fame quarterbacks essentially with Ben Roethlisberger and um, Tom Brady. Yes. Um, if, if you had a starter team right now, which one would you be picking as your quarterback first? Both. <laughs> probably probably Big Ben though. I think I just have more time with Big Ben more. Uh, Obviously, they're two great quarterbacks. I mean, you can't go wrong with anyone. Uh, thank God I've been grateful to play with uh, as much talented as two talented guys as those guys. You know, Hall of Famer quarterbacks, you know, pioneers, um, amazing talent leaders. Obviously, you know, I've been great, grateful and uh, abundantly blessed to be able to play with those type of uh, leaders and uh, players because it only uh, – you know, put me in a position as a player that I'm in, thanks mm -hmm. to those guys. You know, I would have never put up those type of numbers or stats uh, if it wasn't with, for, because of Big Ben. And obviously, if Tom Brady didn't like, take liking to me and give me an opportunity, you know, I potentially would never have been a Super Bowl champion. So, That's why know, I'm shocked to hear you say uh, yeah. you, you would take Ben over yeah. Tom. You got, the, you got the ship with, uh, with, I know. with, but, with Tom. Well, I feel like obviously if me and Tom had more time, you know, who who tells what that would be like. But, you know, the thing that me and Dun me and uh, Ben have done, you know, is second and none. Sometimes I make up plays, he just look, he throw the ball in the loud, you know, so you Y'all just had a better understanding of not even understanding, just we had more time in. You know, obviously I had understanding with both quarterbacks. I mean all my quarterbacks I played with, but more so these guys, these guys elite and like one on ones. You know, I think I just played longer with Ben, you know. My whole career of nine years was just all Ben Roethlisberger, so it was kind of, kind of got a feel and yeah. understand. Obviously, I played with Tom, but we played maybe 10, 11 games, but I think we was on track for some cool stuff. But, you know, when I'm operating in an emotional standpoint, you know, I, you know, I usually come after these guys, but I wouldn't be who I am if it wasn't because of these guys. But sometimes I get emotional. We all people were made up of three phases, physical, mental, and emotional. And I feel like, you know, as emotional, you know, when you're a great receiver and you got a great quarterback, you just want to be selfish and do great things, but it's okay to be selfish. Yeah. I just had a bigger appetite. You know, some guys want it, some guys don't want it. You know, you, I just want it. I, um, I got I got a couple more football questions, then we're going to hop off and get into some more, like, I, I, want, I want to really get to know A.B. on mm -hmm. some other shit, but I, I do got, yeah. you know, people want to know some of this football stuff, so we're going to yeah, ask yeah, you just it. a couple. I love it. Uh, all right, so uh, right now, you know, the, if they were saying uh, top receivers in the current NFL, we got guys like Devontae Adams, Cooper Cup. Um, Chase. Ch Jamar Chase. Yeah. Um, Justin, right? Justin Fields, Justin up there? 
Uh, what's Justin you talking about? Jefferson? Yeah, Justin Jefferson. Absolutely top. No, no, you got uh, Cheetah. Hold on, we ain't say Cheetah. Oh, yeah, damn it. Yeah, tripping. don't forget the Cheetah. If you're going to the NFL, make sure you see the Cheetah. <laughs> you dig? So, so let me ask you a question. Yeah. Where does AB rank against those guys? I mean, AB for above, so like, you already know I'm top. <laughs> you did. <laughs> I mean, obviously I don't play no more, so I really can't compare my rank against those guys because that's the thing. When you become an OGs, you just want to see your young guys like surpass you or just go crazy. So obviously, you know, you don't want to compare the times of what I did and what they did. You know, we could compare when they done, but obviously the young guys, I mean, Cheetah, the 30 million, the Devontae Adams, you know, it's you know, it's a lot of new guys, AJ Brown, you know, my cousin Marquise Brown, you got uh DK Metcalf. Terry McLaurin. I, I mean, you got too many G's, Terry McClellan, like uh Mike Evans, Chris Godwin. Like you got G's all over there, man. So many it's a lot of us, man. It's not just one of us, it's a lot of us and everybody perfect the craft and the skill a different way. You know, for me, I think I pioneered it in some ways was just showing guys they could have an epitome, uh, a Hugo, a grande workout, work ethic, you know what I mean? And see a transfer. What, from, made, you know? what made you so hard to cover, man? It was like, if you if you had to say it was like, what? why was it that like it seemed like every game everybody knew you were going to get the ball, but you were able to get 10 plus catches and 100, 200 damn yards? Like what? How the hell are you so tough to deal with? What 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 is it that you did differently than most of these receivers, or how are you able to just carve people alive like that? I call God more. I had a closer relationship to God than these guys. You know, I got blessed. You know, I, don't, I just think God put me in a position because you know it's tough. You know, being a football player, you got to depend on so many people. The coach got to draw the plays. The quarterback got to want you. So many things got to go right for your success. So for me, you know, I can't take credit and say, you know, I did it or, you know, God did it, you know. I prayed on him, you know, I made a goal. I worked at it and, you know, it happened. Um, <laughs> who's your toughest uh, uh, matchup you won against? If you had like a DB, what, like a mm -hmm. Champ Bailey's or whatever, who was it that you probably said, damn, man, this motherfucker going to be – Damn, it's a game today. Probably myself, man. I'd be like, damn, man, if you're going to push the quarterback out because he don't give you the ball, or should I slap the coordinator because he ain't, you know, the first 20 plays, first, I ain't touching it in the first five plays. Do that fuck with you? Like, if you in the game and, like, you, you done went 10 plays, 15 plays, they hadn't, you know, targeted you for whatever reason. Yeah, I'm looking at now, just, it's just more aggressive looking at them boys, like, for real. Yeah, my job is to be encouraged by the ball, like to want the ball. So like I'm running campaigns. <laughs> you did. I'm running the biggest campaigns on the balls. Like, like I'm like, yee yee. I'm putting notes in this locker. To, like I'm trying to get the ball. Like for real, I want the ball. So I'm campaigning for it. But it's only one ball, and it's a team game. You know, you can't just feed one guy. I, I wish it was like that, but that ain't yeah. realistic. All right, so. I love talking about like you know the the game, but let's talk about just like some of the fruits of the game and yeah. and, and the things that come with it. First and foremost, yeah. you've been able to make millions of dollars in the sport. Yeah. Um, what are some of the like? What, what, tell me like the 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 biggest purchase you've made? You know since you you know you came into making big money. Well, I'm still looking to make some. You know what I mean? It's not what I did in the past. What I'm looking to do. So I'm looking to buy a yacht. Soon, I'm looking to, um, you know, de develop a PE fund and just load it up. So, you know, I'm just continuing looking forward to, you know, more things. Obviously, I don't board mansions and all the the norm things of, you know, being a million dollar player, but it's all about, you know, never being content and growing. So I'm always looking forward to the now and what I can spend now. So. I'm thinking about a yacht. Yachts next because I was sitting there looking at you. You got a yacht on your um on your wrist right oh, now. Oh yeah, 
That's just um, a Bugatti engine. <laughs> you got a fucking yacht on your wrist right now, and this shit has a whole engine inside of it. Yeah, that's the Bugatti Jacob, man. Shout out to Jacob. The whole Jacob family. As, as you yeah. as you've been balling, man, you've had opportunities to do things that were really crazy. You went and got on Dancing with the Stars, right? Um, which which is kind of funny because your your touchdown celebrations, which the NFL didn't like, seems like the world loved it, um, and a lot of people got behind you, and you did a phenomenal job on Dancing with the Stars. I, did that change your life much getting on that like because I know that's like a next level type platform and it's by yourself versus being on the field. What was it like being on Dancing with the Stars? It was a good challenge, man. Just trying to perfect the craft or learning the skill and like being able to perform it. So I was just, you know, shouting out to Dancing with the Stars, Miss Dina, uh, Shauna, my partner. You know, that was it was amazing, man. It was just an amazing experience to just challenge myself in the off season. Being able to fly to LA, perform on Sunday, practice on Saturday, you know, dance all week no matter where I'm at. We got four to six hour dance studio. I got to be there with Shauna and practice in the dancing. So I think it was a challenge. Uh, it was fun. And uh, I think it was beneficial just with my shock absorbers, making sure my ankles, I think it was a challenge. It was, it was an betterment, a challenge. It was a lot of fun. Is um, it is like getting on a, a platform like that and, and essentially going worldwide, like some of the things that influence you to want to go into like your own, you know, your own lane with, with music and things like that. Did that really kind of let you see a different light? Because I think like for you, you know, you you were able to get exposed on stuff because of your 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 stardom on the field that kind of makes makes you see things off the field maybe a little bit differently. Uh, how, how how was that for you? For me, I've always been doing music since college, like Central Michigan. You know, way out in Mount Pleasant, there's not a lot of things to do. So one of my boys named Tyler Reed he had a studio in his house. He even hooked up one in my spot, and he's an engineer. We just used to create. You know what I mean? So. It was a freedom of just like expression where we was at in Michigan. And, uh, you know, once I was playing football, I didn't do it much. We used to kick a couple freestyles, but 2019 when I wasn't playing, you know, I got, you know, I got back in it a little more. One of my friends, Sean Kingston, who grew up right here in Fort Lauderdale. So I was doing the YouTube videos with the voiceover with the mic. And so we started just getting into it even harder. And you know how you go to training camp? We went to booth camp. Booth camp. You know what booth camp is? What's that? That's when you gotta stay up all night. Like we can't go to sleep until the sun come up. That's when you lay down. I mean, we in boot camp. So we ain't be in the studio all night to all night till the sun come up. So it was like, you know that training camp grind? I was like, that yeah. boot camp grind. You know what I mean? So that's what you locked into now. You in, you obviously killing it in music uh, with some of your, your, your uh, songs you drop. Put that shit on is, is really, yeah. Uh, it's trendy as hell, man, and it, it, it's, it's something that you don't expect, but it's like, damn, that's dope, yeah. man. It, it, like, when I first heard why, it, why, I, why wouldn't you expect that from me, though? Bro, like, I, I, I wasn't expecting that shit, bro. Like, I ain't gonna lie, you know. Come on, like, man, it's me, baby. I'm like, I'm like, man, AB tripping. It's me, man. Like, I'm, I'm just keeping a buck with you. I'm you like, did. man, I'm like, man, I'm, this is like most of America, and I, I was, you know, I'm gonna tell you, honestly, like, I was on both sides because, man, I love watching you play the sport. I'm like, man, this man don't know what the hell he's doing when it comes to to uh, being an artist. This man is a fucking all-pro wide receiver. He needs to focus <laughs> on being an all-pro wide receiver. Right. So so when you drop music, I'm not sitting here expecting you to have something that's going to be, that's going to be, you know, Some damn, quality. we that shit rock a little bit. Okay, all right, damn. I'm with, I'm with Kanye West, man. With Ye, where you think it's going to come out? That's I'm hard, though. Goat. What is it like working with Ye, man? It's amazing, man. Creative genius, you know. Anthropopish, you know, philopopish, you know what I mean? Legend, man. Pioneer. He knew when to uh, start rapping. You know, he's a producer. He knew when to start rapping. They probably, they told Ye he would never be a rapper. Now he's the biggest rapper ever, greatest rapper ever. But he had to know when to start producing. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, not only his, uh, you know, pioneer ability, but his uh, confidence and belief within himself to always put his best foot forward and put himself in the best position. So shout out to Ye. You did. Hey, look, 
y'all, y'all both be wearing these crazy ass boots, man. What's up with these boots, dog? Yeah, we suited and booted, man. You know, <laughs> you did, <laughs> you did. Hey, my dog. Yeah. Hey, I said y'all be having these big ass boots you on. Know, man. Tony was coming, so I bought a special pair. Like these, the <laughs> performance kind. So these right here, these right here, you did. You gotta really like, you know, these them show vibes. When you wear these, it's like you gotta bend your knees a little bit lower on the walk. Like you gotta, you know, you just. Are they comfortable? Yeah, super comfortable. No shoe screens, man. We've been tied down my whole life. <laughs> I've been beat with belts. What, man, what, what you been with, with, man? Damn, niggas with me with switches, belts, stitching cords. Oh, yeah, shit. My grandma was, uh, my, between my grandma and my dad, it was like whatever they could find. Yeah, whatever was in, uh, was in eyesight, that's what you got your ass whooped with, man. Yeah. I'm done with all the ass whoopings and uh, the shoe screens and the belt, man. If it ain't a rock star belt with some diamonds, like, I ain't even scrapping my waist up. I, <laughs> I love this nigga, man. Yeah, <laughs> it's hard out here. Hey, yo, so uh, I, I got I to gotta ask you, man, like, because, like, one of the things, like, just, in, you know, the fellas always want to know, man, what's, what's, the, what's the shorties like, man? You, you done got to the level of, like, that superstar shit. So you in the room with all the bad ones. Yeah. We seen you on Shade Room, breaking hearts. What I did? You, you was on Shade Room, breaking hearts, man. <laughs> you, you, you got R&B divas, man. you you got all kind of shit going on, man. Give me a, a give me an AB uh, uh, hit list, man. Who on the hit list, man, that you ain't got yet? That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, I'm putting you on the spot. Nah, nah. <laughs> Damn, I'm a hit list. Damn, but I don't know what to say. <laughs> right now, I'm just, you know, I'm on my God body. Like, I ain't really, you know, I'm in the self. I'm in the master and self. You know, these girls, you know, some girls, you know, they're looking for the wrong things. You know, I'm self-sufficient in my life, so I ain't really looking for a girl to really do nothing to me. Like, when I think about it, Eve trick Adam. So, like, the key is to just have you one girl to really, like, but that's impossible. So I don't know, it's complicated. Like everybody fake now. Everybody probably cheating on everybody. Like everyone's just, I don't know, it's complicated. You don't, you don't have- I don't want no one, everyone's fake now. So, so- I want someone, but I can't really. I mean, I, I mean, you did. All right, here, here, let me let me switch the question up then. I'm, I'm gonna dig a little bit more for okay. for the fellas, man, because we want to know, man, who was somebody that you wanted to get that you got? Damn. Yeah. Who 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 on the list that you was like, yeah, I gotta have her, <laughs> and you and you and you done, and you done struck her now? Damn. See, I don't really be hunting with a list. You know what I'm saying? If I'm hunting, then it's just, you know, you just get what you hunt. But like, I ain't got no hit list. Like, I ain't really. Premeditating no body counts, you know. I'm just in the master in myself, so if I take care of myself, then you see good things happen. <laughs> you did. <laughs> you did. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh shit! Yeah. The rock star life you live in, man. Like, uh, it, I, I, I'm, I'm jealous, nigga. I'm, I'm jealous, man, because it's a good life. <laughs> you, <did. laughs> you feel me? Life's hard, you know. You gotta make life peaceful. You know. My dog said you ain't gonna get it out of me, Tone. I was trying to get it out. I was trying to get it out of me. I'm, like, <laughs> I'm hitless. I'm like, damn, this shit on paperwork. <laughs> so yeah. what's what's been like for you now? Um, what's been what's been like some of the goals that you set for yourself? Um, and, and being able to just you know grow your music and 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 your your artist you know world that you've been trying to build now. Well, for right now, you know, just keep creating every day. You know, I'm in the studio, working the craft, organizing the track, just trying to create the highest energy outside the box. Obviously, I got shows every week. We traveling somewhere to even push it even further or bigger. 
Uh, the month of September coming up, uh, a lot of opportunities. So uh, just want to continue to pioneer, grow, uh, being true to myself and uh, representing, representing the culture, representing love, confidence, and uh, be courageous. What artists are you looking forward to working with um, and, and do music with? Everyone, man. These guys, women, you know, these ladies, my all my sisters, these the guys in the game, all my brothers. So I want to work with all my brothers to create the highest energy, you know, the highest effect on the motivation of the world. So I'm really into I'm just looking forward to, you know, continuing to perfect in the crowd. What would you say your greatest accomplishment is? I'm still looking forward to it. I'm still looking forward to do it. But so far, what do you feel like something that you've already accomplished? I mean, I'm never living on what I already done. I'm, li I'm living on what I'm about to do. So, and I've done a lot of great things, but I don't carry them like my luggage. You know, I'm always looking for it. You know, I'm grateful for them, but I'm always looking for the next one. Mm. You, you got a... Uh... You got a lot of shit, right? You got uh, being being an artist. You got being a father. You got um, the, the businessman. I heard you mention Donda Sports. You uh, you know you got so many different other things that I'm sure you have going on as well. You you got clothes. You're, you're designing. You you like you got your hands in so many different pots. Let's talk about the importance of building a brand. Um, so many people overlook the importance of having a brand. Just what, what you've been able to build with your, your likeness. Um, did you did you intentionally do this young? I mean, at, younger in your career, early in your career, or, or was it something that you really realized as you got older how important it was to establish and have a, a brand? I feel like that's the misconception now with you know the young generation. Where everyone's caught up on having a brand or, or being some influencer or someone's online. You know, being the player was always about me, just being the best player and then, you know, being my best self and then the rest of the stuff would come with it. You know, I was a six round pick, you know, I ain't just roll into the league and they just ran off commercials or they just showed me love or put me in the front of the line. You know, I had to earn my spot and then learn about Brandon and doing the right things to be able to put myself in a good position, but, you know, you can't have a brand unless you have work, and uh, work is more important than the brand. So if you know more for your brand than work, probably you're not gonna have a good brand. So for me, I always wanna be known for my work, and if you know for good work, and then you have a good brand. That's what's up. Um, with, with being able to create some of the stuff that you, you have with, with having a brand from the work that you put in, um, obviously, like it creates golden opportunities. Have you seen, um, I guess, like from what you had experience from playing football to now, like have you seen more in interest from like other brands now after your career uh, as per like when you were actually, you know, uh, playing? I feel like I, obviously playing is always going to be the most when people seeing you on the TV and playing, but. I've been able to put myself in a good position where I'm able to still get some big time deals. So for me, I'm just grateful. Uh, you know, I still get respect from the people to, you know, to keep my value where it's at and uh, to continue to just grow all phase. Mm -hmm. What What makes you happy, bro? Like, what, 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 like my what? happy meal or my happy place. Like, you know, what's your happy place? place? Like, what, what, what's uh, what kind happy of like brings you into your life? I just like to call God, man. Usually, if I'm in my journal book, got some candles, you know, Baccarat candles. You know, peaceful environment, not a lot of noise, no phone. Just going my inter inter self, inter intellectual self, intuition, and intuitive, and just. Connect with God. That's what my saying is called God. You know, that's my happy place. My happy meal is probably like the sherbet coconut ice cream. You know, my happy fuck. You know, I had a lot of happy fucks too. Like, <laughs> not like I fucked someone and got happy. It was just like, you know, 
or a good fuck, you know, a lot of good fucks, yeah. Not like, <laughs> not like, not, you know what I'm saying? Not like someone fucked me and it was good. It's just like you was good to a person and they fucked you over. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So instead of handling it in a bad way, because in life is about persevering through adversity. Life's not easy. Yeah. You know, not every time you're gonna be kind to someone, they going it's gonna go good for you. So really, just handling adversity. Life is about handling adversity and being able to overcome it. Cause uh, how you respond to adversity is the true test of character. So. For me, you know, what you gonna do when someone fuck you over? And how you gonna handle it? How you do you be professional with that? And those are things we gotta teach people how to do because emotionally, you know, I'm, I'm not always there when people try to good fuck me, you know? And that's the problem with the world. It's too many good fucks. You know, too many good people getting fucked and nobody cares. So, for me, it's about just, you know, Fulfilling the highest, the highest form of myself, physically, mentally, emotionally, so to continue to you know work on those phases, so we can pioneer better football, you know, better uh, mental health, uh, better life after football, and then betterment in, per in general because life, there's no life without the people, so you got to take care of the people. How, like, how do you think like you've been just on your um you know, you, you took some big shots, and I heard you mention earlier um, some some players that passed away in the NFL uh, from CTE that nobody spoke about. Um, how do you feel like you know you are mentally and in, in your head, and you know the, some of the shots you're taking? Uh, yeah. Do you feel like you're good? Have you been tested or anything like that? I don't know if, the, if you can be tested. Like I feel like I'm good, man. I'm doing what I love. I don't. I'm not living with any regrets or can't look at a football game or feeling like I shoulda, woulda, coulda. You know, I've done everything I've set out to do, thank God, you know, with God on my side and uh, the right team and the right people. I've been able to live out a NFL dream, you know, where people uh, die for, you know, or, or give their life for, you know, so I've been forever grateful, man. Uh, I was able to accomplish some amazing things, make some great memories with some amazing people. And I was able to walk away with, you know, some sort of help, you know, where I could, you know, play some basketball with my son. I could dunk a basketball, you know, I could. You could dunk, man? Yeah, man, you know, I could do what I want. <laughs> you know, I mean, I mean, God gave me the talent, you know, so it's bigger than just me, but, you know, God, you know, I possess some skills, you know. So I'm just grateful and just, you know, want to pioneer the, pioneer life, pioneer myself and everything around me just to make it better. You got a beautiful uh, facility in here, man. Like the Thank artwork you. in here and everything is amazing. When I went Thank upstairs uh, earlier, I was looking at like, hey, look where we're gonna set up at. And I saw uh, an iconic moment from you. Oh yeah? Bruh, man, you didn't think you about to jump over that man's head like that, dog. I knew I was gonna do it. I was just thinking too fast. <laughs> You know, you running the ball, you like, yo, you got to jump. I did it too fast. Bro, bro you the first player I seen kick kick somebody in, in mid-air. I mid put a score that one, too. That probably been a tutty. Dog, that shit was like, that was like the most legendary punt return <laughs> shit I've oh, ever gosh. seen. Like, did you got fired for that or something, didn't you? Yeah, I paid the toll for that one. Huh? Yeah, I paid the toll. Yeah, they got you, yeah. That 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 yeah. was a hell of a moment, man. That's gonna be one of the clips we're gonna have to show y'all. Uh, if, yeah. if you if you missed it, uh, AB had a had a play where he he went to go uh, jump, but it looked like he just kicked the shit out of uh, the punter in the head, and he's got a dope picture of it upstairs. Uh, we gotta make sure we get that as well, guys. That that that's funny. We're gonna we're gonna clip that in. Um, man, let me just see what else I got left before we wrap, bro. Man, yeah. I appreciate you taking time, dog. Uh, even even off camera, man, you've been you've been a hell of a guy to me. Um, you know, just to be able to build with you, bro. I got a lot of respect for you. Uh, I uh, respect. Being a father, let's talk about that a little bit. Uh, nobody gives us a, a, a handbook on how to be a parent. I know me personally, man. That's been one of the things. Like, I got two boys, and um, trying to make sure, like, I, I, I'm the best possible model of what I would want and be proud of. 
Um, what What are some of the things that you 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 feel like are are important for you and your children? Um, as far as like establishing like first and foremost like the understanding of being a great like what it takes to be great and what it takes to like think beyond what people may see as acceptable in their eyes like i know like that's one of the big things for you know like someone like you who think who's a thinker who thinks outside of like you, you do like what, what like they say that genius thought where you're not operating in the realm of like how most people like in society would say is okay. So what what are you uh, trying to emphasize to your children? Are you telling them like to, and encouraging them in ways of like, hey, be a free thinker, pursue your dreams, think beyond and bigger than uh, what other people are telling you you can and should and how you should do things? Obviously we, you know, providing the best the best guidance and leadership to, you know, help the help my kids become their best selves. You know what I mean? And that's not what I want them, not what I want from them, is just really helping them want for what they want for themselves and helping them be them best selves physically, mentally, emotionally. So for me as a dad, it's just, you know, always being the encourager, uh, being a leader, uh, being a good example, and, uh, just being present, you know, your presence is a presence. So just being an encourager, you know, to, to whichever they energy or motivation goes. Mm -hmm. What 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 challenges have, would you say you have uh, with, with parenting that you feel like you want to do better or something? I feel like parenting is a, is a challenge, you know, that everything's a challenge, you know, anything you, worth being great, you got to work at it, make it better, and, and it's going to be a challenge. Nowadays, kids love their phones. They love the video games. You could play it at your house or any other household. You could play it online now. I mean, they wasn't around. We was around. Mm -hmm. So nowadays, it's, it's just trying to help your kid get to the point where they could be them best selves. I feel like it's kind of hard as a parent when the kid, don't, you know, they, they, they learning themselves as they grow as well. You learning them as well as to them learning themselves. And you're trying to lead them into where they want to go, but you know, just the normalcy of the process of being a father and seeing your kids evolve and grow from different phases. It's just you, you know. I feel like being so emotional as a dad. I feel like you want your kid's life to be, you know, you kind of almost want to control it. And, mm -hmm. But you know, only God controls life, and I'm just here to, you know, be a good example and be a good encourager for them to become them best selves. What's your uh you pulled up in the in the old school today. What's your favorite uh, car that you drive now? Probably my next one. <laughs> yeah, I never get like you know, I don't have no lock ins or no attachments or no tie ins to my cars. You know, I got a lot of them, but it's always the next one. What's better than old? So new. You did. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. Hey, man. Mm -hmm. um, let me let me see, man. Let me just run off some random shit real quick. We got. I'm gonna wrap here in a second. Um, How long we got? Two hours? Nah, man. We we about just, to get out. Nah, I ain't tripping. I just want to know the set so it's sexy. No, we we, we, got, we we had 50 minutes. We about to wrap. Nah, it's uh, lit. We lit. I ain't rush. I'm from Africa, not rush. <laughs> I just want to know what type of time, you know. Yeah, you we, did. I, I just want to get... I got uh, some wide receivers right there. Okay, then. I'm listening, champ. Yeah, I'm trying to think if there's anything that I, I can push off just to get Whatever like, you some want. little free fire. Uh, you're, you're, you obviously got the ice. What what's the what's the most expensive purchase, purchase you've made with jewelry? Is it that watch over there or you had something crazier? Probably my next one. You know, we always going bigger on the next. You got to. Yeah, but I got like a the Scarface, not the Godfather. I got the Godfather, Jacob. That's pretty impressive. But how much was that one? She got. I mean, it was I had half a ticket. Shoo. Going but, crazy. You know, it was, you know it some added value. It's an asset. You know, put that shit on. <laughs> that shit, uh, 
<laughs> um, you did. Man, that's a wrap, man. That was dope, man. I had my man AB on here. Uh, y'all make sure y'all tune in uh, each and every week. We got new drops for you, man. Appreciate AB for coming in, brother. Get your ass um, up, baby. It's the podcast, baby. You did. Yeah. One more time. Let me. This is boy AB. Hey, yo, this your boy AB. I'm here with Tone. Get your ass up, podcast. You did. Yeah, you know I mean? <laughs> That's a bet. It's a wrap, <laughs> dog. Kill that. That's a wrap for today's episode of the Get Your Ass Up podcast. Thank you so much for joining me in this journey of learning, growth, and self-improvement. I hope you found value in our discussion and feel inspired to apply the insights we've shared to your own life. If you enjoyed the show, please don't forget to subscribe, leave a five-star review, and share it with your friends and family. We're committed to providing you valuable content to our listeners, and your support continues to help the growth, and I want to over-deliver on that promise. I'm your host, Tony DeClose, and I want to remind you to never stop striving for greatness. Keep pushing yourself. Never give up. And remember that we're all in this together. Stay tuned for more empowering episodes continuing our way to success. Until next time, keep moving forward. And remember, get your ass up and make that shit happen.